Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. And in this video, I am going to be showing you guys how to browse the deep web safely and anonymously. So, without further ado, let's get to this. Welcome to the Deep Web Starter Guide. Firstly, let's talk about the operating system to use. Personally, I would stay away from Windows as a client on the Deep Web because uh, Windows is a very vulnerable operating system when it comes to viruses and backdoors. So with Windows out of the question, there are two other alternatives um, and one of them uh, being the simplest is running a virtual machine. Now, a virtual machine offers isolation when it comes to accessibility as it is being run virtually. Um, so you can use any operating system in the virtual machine. However, if you're going to use Windows on the virtual machine, make sure you have an antivirus installed. Uh, it can be any antivirus as long as it's good and uh, it can be free as long as it's doing its job. But again, I highly uh, recommend that you do not use Windows uh, for browsing the deep web. Now, uh, the virtual machine, uh, there are a couple of examples of uh, some that you might uh, want to use are VMware or VirtualBox, VMware being the most secure. Obviously, a virtual machine isn't all that secure because uh, uh, basically it's running on your uh, operating system and you're actually using the same network connection. So if you, know, if you come across a virus that is smart enough to, to break through the virtual machines bridges and enter your operating system it could be lethal so again um, if when using a virtual machine make sure you have antivirus installed and uh, again stay away from Windows um, all right so now let's take a look at the safest operating systems to use uh, either on a virtual machine or uh, by installing them on a USB flash drive and running them live uh, personally I would run them on a virtual machine because it's so much easier and you have a lot of control over the, uh, the basic installation and uh, usage. So, uh, I, I would love to use any Linux distro in browsing the deep web, but there are a couple that have been developed especially for deep web browsing and anonymity. The first one being uh, CubesOS. So CubesOS, as the website says, is a reasonably secure operating system. So, it's a Linux distro that is offering uh, great security, obviously. Now, uh, as you can see, uh, there are a lot of uh, recommendations by experts. Now, experts, so I know for a fact that one of them is going to be Edward Snowden, uh, as you can whistleblow and privacy advocate. If you're serious about security, Cubes OS is the best OS available today. It's what I use, and it's free. So, uh, that's basically all you need when talking about uh, anonymity and security. If Edward Snowden is um, supporting this project, um, I, I don't see a reason why. So basically it's a free download. Uh, the only problem I had with this is that it's quite large. It's about 4 gigabytes. That's bigger than Kali Linux. I mean, come on guys, uh, make it a bit smaller. Uh, which is it, not really a problem, but um, uh, yeah, you can just use this on your virtual machine and or maybe install it on a USB and you'll be good. If you want a review on this OS, let me know in the comments section and I'll be sure to make one. The next operating system I recommend is Tails OS. Now Tails OS is similar to Cubes OS, except uh, this is really focused on a more of a uh, temporary uh, operating system. Meaning it, you can't use this as a daily driver. It's just focused more on you achieving what you're downloading it for, which is uh, browsing the deep web or basically for privacy and uh, protection of your identity. Now the, th the thing I like about this operating system is that it's a fully live operating system. Now what this means in relation to this operating system is that um, you basically install it on a virtual machine or a USB flash drive and once you use it and you're done, when you shut down the operating system, it basically wipes the entire drive that uh, it is installed on. Or For example, if you install it on a flash drive, it'll wipe the entire flash drive so that there's literally no trace of what you're doing. Now that sounds a bit shady, but really this is really awesome for guys who just want security and um, it's just amazing. And as you can see here, it leaves no trace and uh, it uses state-of-the-art cryptographic tools to encrypt your files, emails and instant messaging. So this is basically the whole nine yards um, and it's uh, 
awesome for anonymity. So out of the two, Tails and Cubes OS, I recommend either one depending on what you guys need. Now, the final one I would like to recommend, I think most of you guys know if you watch my channel, is Kali Linux. Now, why would I say Kali Linux? Um, firstly, because it, it's so much easier to install Kali Linux and then using any of these other operating systems that are that basically focus on one thing Kali Linux can be used as a daily driver it can do it can act as a desktop uh, operating system and it's just it's just awesome for basically cryptography and uh, um, state of the art uh, network administration so uh, I would recommend Kali Linux as well if you're really looking uh, for something a bit more permanent uh, in terms of browsing the deep web so that's basically it for uh, the operating systems. And now I'm going to talk about how to uh, set up Tor for uh, ultimate um, privacy and protection. So let's set up Tor. So basically Tor is a browser that allows you to connect to the deep web through relays. Now, what does Tor stand for? Tor stands for the onion router. And the reason it's called the onion router is be given the nature of the uh, the way the deep web is structured it's structured in layers hence the name onion so you get the point now tor is a free free browser that can be downloaded uh, from the website i will link it down in the description uh, it is a free browser again all the links will be in the description section to all the resources mentioned in this video so all you have to do is download it uh, on your appropriate um, operating system uh, I'll be demonstrating this on Windows for the sake of it. Uh, again, you can see you have Windows, Mac OS X, and Linux. Obviously, uh, if you're going to be using Linux, hit Linux either 64-bit or 32-bit, whichever architecture you're running. So once you've downloaded it, uh, it's as simple as just installing it. Uh, just run it. If it's on Linux, uh, you can basically download the installed folder and you can just run it directly. So uh, basically... Uh, just uh, let it install and once it's done installing just hit uh, just open it up All right, let's open it up Alrighty, so once Tor is done setting up uh, it's going to open uh, what appears to be a browser now This is running uh, based on one of the Firefox browsers So this is a Mozilla based browser, but uh, with Tor settings So uh, one thing the first thing I would recommend is never maximize the browser as you see, if you maximize the screen, it'll tell you maximizing the Tor browser can allow websites to determine your monitor size, which can be used to track you. So pretty self-explanatory. Don't ever maximize your Tor uh, brow browser window. So that's basically that. Uh, so once you're done here, once you're done, uh, once it's open, you want to go to your top left and you want to forbid the scripts. All right. You want to make sure that no scripts are running like JavaScripts. All right. So once you've done that, you want to go here and you want to hit new identity, hit OK, and it's going to open the browser again. So once you have a new identity, you're basically good again. Uh, the scripts are disabled. Now you want to go for Tor network settings. And this is where you basically, uh, if, you're, if your ISP blocks Tor, you can just um, check that. And uh, that's one of the settings that I wanted to show you guys in case you have that problem. All right, so you're basically good to go. Uh, as I said, the first, uh, the most important rule is forbid scripts. Rule number two, if you're running this off a laptop, please cover your webcam. All right, I'm not trying to scare anyone, but this is the reality of the of the deep web, is that it's very easy for them to uh, hack into your webcam and use that to spy on you. So uh, cover your webcam with tape or whatever you feel uh, like. Otherwise, uh, just disconnect your webcam uh, if you're running on a PC. So, uh, once you have disabled scripts, uh, you can now start browsing the deep web. Obviously, whatever you do the, on there is up to you. This is just a tutorial on on how to use the deep web. Um, I'm not condoning any of the legal activities on the deep web. Yeah, so that's basically how you browse on Tor. You can access the hidden wiki. I think it exists uh, still. I'm not so sure. You should be able to access it. The other thing is that... Uh, the Tor browser is going to be very slow because the connection is run through a series of relays. But if you want me to make a video on how the Tor or the how the deep web works, please leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to make it. So that's basically it guys for the uh, deep web starter kit. Uh, this is all you need to get uh, onto the deep web safely 
and anonymously if you want more information comment down below and i'll be happy to make another video uh, regarding the topic if this video did help you please leave a like i hope um, that you guys enjoy this video uh, and yeah that's basically it guys have a fantastic day peace